How's it going, you guys? It's Scott with Everyday Home Repairs. Now, a few weeks ago on Amazon, I ran across the largest power strips I've ever seen in my life. This one's a 24 outlet. I got another 24 outlet, and believe it or not, there's even one with 25 outlets that even have them on the side, but I wanna put them to the test, give them a shot. We'll do some load testing on these to see do they actually heat up where this would be a fire hazard or maybe there's some hot spots on the power strip. And also let's look inside, let's tear them open and see what does the overall construction look like and how the heck do you tie all these outlets together? Let's jump into it. So here's the first setup. I'll have three different heat guns. If you guys don't know, whenever you have a heating element, that is gonna be a pretty heavy load on your circuit. These are definitely not name brands, so we'll just go by the colors here. So we'll have the blue one, the yellow one, and the red one. Red one is first up. I have a little bit of a load on there, over five amps. I'm gonna use the Klein Tools clamp meter so we can monitor the amps. And I'm just using this power meter right now to make sure that the amps are accurate. So just comparing across both of those and it looks pretty good. So what I'll do now is I'll put a 16 amp load on each of these and run it for 10 minutes to see if the integrated switch here that should go ahead and trip if we get beyond 15 amps, which is what all of these are rated at. And then we'll go much higher than 16 amps for a short period of time to see how much each of these can carry before they trip. For the testing, I'll use a combination of different heat guns to really dial in the current. Here you can see we're right at that 16 amps for our first test. And I don't recommend you removing your outlet like that to get a current, but that's how I'm running across one hot line. And then I'll use the thermal imaging camera to kind of track what is the hottest spot hottest temperature I see on each of the three power strips. You can see there's a range on the right hand side and that red dot kind of tracks the hottest spot. Here early in the testing, you'll see we get up to 90 degrees Fahrenheit, but it'll get much hotter than that. So we'll finish up the testing, but let's take a quick look inside each of these. Remember red, blue, and yellow, if you need references on which one you're looking at here down in the description. If you're crazy enough to buy one of these, you'll see I'll use the color coding. Now the screws are definitely not the type of screws you put on a product if you want your customers opening them up. I don't even know what screwdriver you'd use on some of these, but at least a small flathead did get them open. All right, open this guy up. This one's interesting. This one has those outlets on the side too. Now we'll take a closer look, but overall, I don't love the combination here of wires and then kind of bus bars connecting everything up. So starting off with the red one, all the designs are actually fairly similar, even with the exterior looking quite a bit different on this 25 outlet power strip. I mean, overall it's really similar design. I don't love that they use green wire for your ground and then also green wire for what I believe is the neutral. So they're kind of just using the same color wiring. That's not best practice. The other ones actually don't do that, which is a little more encouraging, but let's look close at the solder joints here. So if you can see there how we soldered from a bus bar wire to connect things up, not loving that. You'd think there's some resistance there and definitely some opportunity for failure just with such a light solder. It's a unique overall design here, but the internals are not encouraging. Okay, so for blue and yellow, overall looks pretty similar. These two are very similar between each other. At least you're using white for your neutrals opposed to green like we saw last time. But again, if we look close to our solder joints, man, those look really lightweight. Let me know what you guys think down in the comments. With this many outlets and bringing through this many amps, you would think you'd want a little better connection. So now let's see if this shoddy design translates into what we're seeing. If it actually trips, do those breakers trip where we expect them to and how much heat is being generated. But I do wanna call your attention to a link in the description about homeowner's insurance. And I know that's not the most exciting topic. My homeowner's insurance went up about 50% over the last three years and some people have it way worse than that. So one, I dug a little deeper. I wanna know what coverage should I be having? What liability coverage should I have? What deductible, what premium should I be paying? So I wanted to ask others. And that's exactly what we're doing in the link in the description. 
the viewers are coming together, they're submitting their information, and then if you submit your information, we will send you your custom report with everyone else from your state so you can start comparing liability, deductible, average premium, how much on average have things increased, so you can be an informed homeowner and an informed consumer. Then if you just wanna shop around a little bit to adjust your coverage or just see if you can get that premium lower, we can also connect you up with an independent insurance agent in your state that we're working with that can help shop multiple different companies and really be an advocate for you. So thanks for submitting your survey and kind of pooling that information so we get smarter together. And we will include that in future videos as well. So let's go ahead and take a look at our test results. So you can check out the spreadsheet right here. I'll put it on the screen. I'm looking at it on the laptop here. We have the red, blue, and yellow in terms of the three different power strips we tested. I did put the brands there, but you can see like the yellow is called Super Danny. That's actually the brand name, Super Danny. And then so we did a 16 amp test and I was wanted to see if the breaker would trip. How fast would the breaker trip? And I maxed that out at 10 minutes. So for the red and the yellow, it actually went the whole duration and did not trip at 16 amps. But the blue at one minute and 16 seconds, it actually did cut off the power and tripped. So the blue, for that test was much better at tripping past what it's rated for, which is right about 15 amps. Then I did a 23 amp test, really cranked it up. And you might be asking, how do you run 23 amps on a 20 amp circuit in your home? Well, most circuit breakers do have a curve and they can handle past the rating for a certain duration of time. They kind of have a min and max curve. And depending on how far past you are over 20 amps, you will need less and less time for it to trip. So you can pull 23 amps especially for one minute without much issue for most brands of circuit breakers red took a minute 14 blue again was the quickest at six seconds it tripped at that 23 amps and then yellow trimmed at 16 seconds then i took the yellow and the yellow was what i saw to have the hottest temperature during the testing it was 111 degrees fahrenheit that's not too bad. Most electronic components are specced for well over 200 degrees Fahrenheit. So 111 isn't too concerning, but I wanted to do a test where I kind of did the laundry test, where you put some laundry on top of your power strip to kind of hold in more heat. And then I ran it at 16 amps for as long as it would go until it tripped. It only went 10 minutes and 46 seconds. So just past that original test, and the temperature did get a little bit higher, but only to 124 degrees Fahrenheit. So again, not great, but not too bad for the load that we were carrying. So let me know what you guys thought. I was a little surprised, honestly. After seeing the internals, I thought we might have some real hot spots there and possibly even getting close to failure, especially going up to like 23 amps. If I had to pick one, I would pick the blue. But overall, I'm not a fan of these massive power strips. I just think they lead to bad behavior. And if you're gonna power heavier loads, definitely don't use that. Maybe there's a use case if you have a lot of small batteries you're charging, you don't always charge them, but you want everything to be plugged in. Maybe there's an application where it makes sense. I'm interested to hear what you guys have to say down in the comments. Now, if you wanna check out some really neat outlet testers for your DIY electrical projects around the house, we'll start simple, but then actually progress up into some really cool ones that have some neat features that come in pretty handy around the house. So you can check out this video right here. I'll walk you through all those. And if you want to see some durability testing on some non-contact voltage tester, a must-have tool if you're taking on DIY projects, you can check out this video. I'll walk you through a ton of different voltage testers, put them through some durability testing, and then kind of pick my two winners at the end. So thanks for joining me on this video, and we'll catch you on one of those next ones. Take care.